today we're going to talk about the At Games Legends Gamer Pro, which has been available for some time, but I only recently picked one up. Well, this impressive device includes two joysticks, a trackball, eight buttons per player. It also includes 150 built-in arcade and console games with the ability to add thousands more. You can play virtual pinball tables connected to a PC or Raspberry Pi. I want to also mention you can find the guide for the Legends Gamer Pro at wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash ALGP. Any additional updates and information will be added there. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. The Legends Gamer Pro ships in a fairly large box, so here I am opening it on the floor. It does include 150 games. I also want to mention up front, if you like what you see ahead, at the time this video was created, they were available from Sam's Club and GameStop for an incredibly great price of only $100. I couldn't resist such a great deal, so I ordered one for review and guide development. I was also pleasantly surprised to see the pinball button kit was included with the Gamer Pro. That kit alone sells for $50 on the At Games website. I'll skim through the manual here. Feel free to pause it if you want to catch any of this. But it's fairly well done, has a lot of great games included. Let's take a closer look at the items from the box. This is the Legends Core, which is the brains of the unit. This is the wireless pairing button, the micro USB port for power, a single USB 3.0 port, I would have preferred two ports, an HDMI port for connecting to your TV or monitor, and an Ethernet port, and it does include Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in as well. This USB Type-A to A cable is used to charge the internal battery in the arcade control panel or to directly connect it to another computer or even a Raspberry Pi if you prefer. It also includes a rather short HDMI cable for connecting the core to your TV or monitor. You also have a USB Type-A to micro USB cable for power to the Legends core. And the AC adapter which is 5 volts and 2000 milliamps. And of course, a USB connection on the front. All right, so let's go ahead and get everything connected. We'll start out by connecting up the HDMI to our TV or monitor. And next we'll plug in the micro USB for the power. The green ring will light up. We'll use the USB type A to A cable to charge up the Gamer Pro's internal battery while we check out some of the included games in a few moments. These two ports are used if we want to use this panel in the Legends Ultimate. However, we'll just plug the other end of the USB cable into the middle port to charge the internal battery. Let's take a closer look at the arcade control panel. The panel itself is rather large, but it kind of needs to be to support two player games. It includes eight buttons per player versus six for the Legends Ultimate. The trackball feels pretty good. At the top middle, you have a P1, P2, menu, and rewind button. The buttons feel pretty good at this point, but then again, we'll have to check it out during gameplay. In the upper right, you have a single power button to turn on or off the panel. The blue blinking LEDs indicate it's ready for wireless pairing to the core. Although at this time, we're using the USB cable, shortly we'll pair it up wirelessly. The core is hiding back here behind the panel. Let's first connect it up to our network by selecting our Wi-Fi SSID. In my case, it's Lucas, so I'll go ahead and select that. Then press the A button on Connect and enter my Wi-Fi password. Click Submit. Great. Now we're connected. I'll now navigate over to the Settings tab and log into my Arcade Net account with my email address and password. After we update the firmware, we'll use the Legends ID to log in from that point forward. You also find the link to sign up for ArcadeNet. There are free and paid options. After logging in, we'll move down to the version tile. It will check to see if there's a new firmware update available, and there is. I'll select the download and then the upgrade button to apply the new firmware on the Legends Core. This process may take around 10 minutes or so, so be patient. Once the update is completed, the device will reboot with the most recent firmware. As mentioned previously, there are 150 built-in games. Some may be familiar to you, others may be a bit more obscure. 
There are 15 pages of 10 games per page, and they're both arcade and console games on the device. I personally recommend trying those that you've never even heard of. There are some really fun games on this machine, and we'll discuss a way you can add thousands more with CoinOps X in just a few moments. Before we do that, I want to demonstrate how you can filter the game list. Select a game, and then press the green menu button. This will allow you to filter on all games or move down to the categories of interest. You can also add a game to your favorites list. Select based on inputs for joystick or trackball games. I'll go ahead and select trackball. And we'll start off by playing Space Gun. While in-game, you can press the green menu button and make some adjustments to the game, such as save slots. In this case, there's five slots available. You can also move down to where it says display mode, and you can change the aspect ratio, such as fit, fill, pixel perfect, or center. I prefer fit. For scan lines, you can set it as horizontal, vertical, or off. Moving back to the player one joystick, we'll play Halley's Comet. There's quite a nice game selection here. There's really games for everybody. There's fighting games, there's shooting games, including this classic, Space Invaders. Now we'll check out a fighting game. This one's pretty cool. It's called Violence Fight. Another fun platformer-style game is Joe and Mac 2, Lost in the Tropics. And if you've never played this next arcade game, it's a classic, and I highly recommend it. It's called Kicks. There are a lot of great games on this machine, some you're going to enjoy, and others maybe not so much. There are too many to show in a single video, so definitely have fun exploring. Next, we'll set up the wireless pairing between the control panel and the core. I'll remove the USB cable connecting the two. Press and hold the green menu button for about 3 seconds if the blue LEDs aren't already blinking. Then, on the core, press the wireless button once and then however many times needed to select Control Deck P1. Then hold the wireless button to pair the two and repeat the same for Player 2. Once paired, you'll be able to use either joystick to navigate the menus as demonstrated here. With your Arcade Net account, you can also stream games directly to your TV or monitor. Using an Ethernet cable will provide better performance. However, here I'll be using Wi-Fi. Let's check out Hoops Shut Up and Jam. Within the lobby, you can play games with others online, and under BYOG, you can use the Add-on or Add-on X tools to play games that you've copied to a USB stick. Under the App Store X tab, you can install purchased pinball volumes, applications such as CoinOps X, and several others. To install the volumes and applications, I'll use this 256GB USB drive, which also contains a CoinOps X partition, which we'll discuss in a moment. If you plan on using the control panel wired with a USB stick, you may want to pick up a small unpowered USB hub such as this one. You'll need at least two ports and the core only has one. 
After inserting your USB stick, you'll navigate over to the Flash Drive X application and select the Format option. Formatting only needs to be performed once. If you're sure you want to format the drive, press Yes. And once the format's complete, just click Dismiss. Now that the format's complete, we can mount the drive. So select Mount and then select Yes. And the drive will be mounted. And again, we can just press the Dismiss button when prompted. You're now ready to install any additional pinball volumes or applications that you want. Now let's say you purchased a pinball volume from the At Games eStore. You will again navigate to the Settings tab, move to the right, and select My Digital Locker. Any codes you wish to redeem will appear here, and from that point, you can download and install the volume you purchased under the App Store X tab. You can certainly play the pinball tables in horizontal mode, however, I'm going to go into Settings and rotate the display to Portrait Mode for this next demonstration, and we'll play Devil Riders 2019, one of the tables I've been playing quite a bit lately. You can see the video capture on the left and the camera view on the right. I briefly want to mention if you go to wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash al dash coinopsx, it'll take you to the coinopsx guide that P-Dubs and I partnered to create. This guide will step you through the setup of coinopsx on your USB stick. Once the drive is prepared, you can install the coinopsx application under App Store X and play thousands of arcade classics. Let's check out a few of them. CoinOpsX makes use of a wheel type of interface for navigating the game list. On the right, you can select by the first letter of the game, then scroll the list of games until you find the one you want to play. Let's start off with a game originally intended for use with a light gun, but plays great using the trackball, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. In the upper right, you can see the trackball being used. We'll check out another classic arcade game, Mappy, which happens to be my daughter's favorite. She kicks my butt every time. <laughs> And this is a game I was never very good at, but it's a lot of fun and it was really innovative at the time. Marble Madness. Now let's cover a few helpful tips. The game Ninja Kid supports four players, connecting the Gamer Pro to the Legends Ultimate, a Gamer Mini, or another Gamer Pro allows more players to join in. For tip number two, if you want to turn on or off wireless mode, simply press and hold the P2 button, or Player 2, for about eight seconds. You may have noticed the Legends Core does not include a power switch. Well, you can easily fix that by adding a micro USB switch like this one that I found on Amazon for about $5. Link below if interested. Each of the main At Games product guides on Wagner's Tech Talk includes a troubleshooting section. At the bottom of each guide is a link that will take you to the At Games customer service department. In recent months, At Games has invested heavily in bolstering their service including live chat support with a real person. In the lower right, you will see a purple chat icon. I'll send a canned message to see how long it takes to get a response, and no one in CS knew I was going to record this ahead of time. Response times may vary during normal business hours. However, in this case, it only took 34 seconds. That's impressive. You can also use your Legends Gamer Pro over USB or Bluetooth with a number of other devices, such as this Raspberry Pi 4. 
Here I'll use the new Pi4 network bootloader to install recall box to a micro SD. I'll then map the controls and buttons and navigate until I find the Atari 7800 emulator. Then we'll check out a great community developed demo of the early 80s classic arcade game Cubert. The full version, which is available on AtariAge.com, is an impressive port. If you connect the Gamer Pro wirelessly to the core and find that the rewind button is not exiting CoinOps X, go to the controller settings, select the control deck P1, and remap the buttons. Once saved, you'll now be able to exit CoinOps X using the rewind button. In our final tip, number 7, here's the recommended way to reconnect the two devices. Unplug the power to the core, then press the power button on the arcade control panel to turn it off. When powering everything back on, plug the power cable back into the core. Once booted, wait until you see the blinking connect icon in the upper right disappear. This one right here. Then power the control panel back on. Wait for the two blinking LEDs to turn to a solid blue. And at that point, the two will be paired and you're ready to navigate the menus and of course, play the games. We've reached the end of another video, and yeah, I think it's a pretty impressive device. I don't have much negative to say about it. It would be great if it had two USB ports, but even that is easily resolved with a small unpowered USB hub. Hopefully you've seen in the video that the Legends Gamer Pro is very versatile, and for the price would be hard to beat. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Please comment below and let me know. Don't forget to check out the guide. Any updated information I find after this video has been created will be added there. If you found this video and the guide helpful, or appreciate the many hours spent on creating them, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you again very soon. Hasta la vista, baby.